This is number 14 of test two of the AccuPlacer. And here we have a table. Um, so before we go into it, let's see what their table, let's decipher this table. So what they do on the left-hand column, they have people who, let's, we're talking about people here. These are people who plan to vote yes on issue P. And I'm just going to make up an issue of who likes hamburgers and who doesn't like hamburgers. So this is the burger issue. So these are people that like burgers, so they vote yes. And then they, these are the people that they vote no. So they ask them, do you like hamburgers? And these people say yes. And these people say no. And then the next question is, is across the top, they have the issue of, do you drink soda? And the answer for some people is yes, I do drink soda. And then the answer for some people is no, I do not drink soda. So we have burger people who like burgers, don't like burgers. Here is soda. Yes for soda, no for soda. So those are the two issues. And they're very pressing issues indeed. So let's figure out what's going on here. The table above shows a survey of 50 registered voters. So they're registered to vote on soda and burgers. Each voter has asked whether they plan to vote yes or no on those two very important issues. If a voter who planned to vote yes on issue P, so this is issue P, is randomly selected, what is the probability that the, that voter also plans to vote yes on issue Q, which is the soda issue? So what they're doing is they're saying, first, we are going to focus on the people who voted yes to whether or not they like burgers. So these are the burger likers. So they're focusing on this group of people. So let me highlight it. So it's just going to be on these folks up here. And what that, that's telling us is that we're going to just for the time being not be concerned with the other group. So that's the first thing that we're looking at. We're just looking at the people that are in the top row. Now, the next thing is, is they're going to randomly select people from this group. So together, we have yes people and no people. Together, there are 20 people. So of those 20 people, if you close your eyes and pick from them, what is the chance that you would pick one of these people, one of the people that voted yes? That's what this is focusing on. So what they're trying to do is find how often you will pick somebody in this top category. OK, so let's just figure out what's going on here. We want people that voted yes to both. So let's figure out how many of these people voted yes and how many of these people voted no. So watch this. For this issue, they both voted yes on hamburgers. So let's get them a little smiley face on this side. So they liked hamburgers. And this group liked hamburgers because they voted yes for it. These people said no. So we're not going to even pay them any attention right now. Now, the next thing is, is do you like soda? Do you drink soda? These people voted yes. And these people voted no. They do not drink soda. This is the group that I am. I, I don't drink soda all the time, but I do drink soda sometimes, and I certainly eat hamburgers. So this is the category that I happen to be in. So anyway, if you closed your eyes and you pick someone randomly, what's the probability? What's the chance that you would pick someone from this group? So obviously, since this is smaller number than this one, there is a higher chance that you would pick somebody from this group just because there's more people in this group. So let's figure it out. Now, when you think of probability, many people think percent and probability is not expressed in percent. It's expressed as a decimal. Now, you can convert that decimal into a percentage, but that's not how you'll see probability. So what we look at is we're looking for a probability for this. So when we do probability, we take this number and this number and we divide them. 
Okay, so let's let me say that again. So we're looking for this. What's the chance to find this percent that probability, which is going to be a decimal? So the question is, is what when you set up your division, what goes inside the house and what goes outside the house? So the way I remembered this is the total goes outside and the part, the piece, the, prob the, the smaller number goes inside. Now, I'm sure there's other ways that people learn how to this or teach this, but the way I always learned it is when you're figuring out a probability, total on the outside, total goes outside the house, so the total goes out, the piece goes in. The total goes out, the piece, the part goes in. The smaller number goes in. Because this number can't be greater than one. So it can, you can have it the same number as this, but this number inside can never be bigger than this number. So now we're just gonna do the straight division. So obviously as 20 is bigger than eight, so it's gonna be less than one, because you can never have a probability greater than one. So watch this, 20 goes into eight, I'm gonna bring up my decimal, four times. Four times 20 is 80. I remember my decimals, I subtract eight from eight, leaving me with nothing, so I have 0.4. Now, we don't have just 0.4 for the probability, we have 0.40, which is equal. So this is your final answer. So this is a combination of a word problem and learning how to read the tables. Plus, you have to understand how probability works. Um, just so you know, if this number is, is, is less than half, so since it's less than 10, I know it's going to be less than 0.5. So I knew it was going to be one of these three. And I can just kind of eyeball it and see that, yeah, that's the right answer. But maybe it could have been 0.36 because these are really close, close, but there's no way it was going to be 0.16. That's way too small. Um, anyway, do the division. The total goes outside. The piece or the part goes inside. And probability can't be greater than 1.